If you want to copy over the iPhone 14's Dynamic Island onto your Android, then download the app called Dynamic Bird. Trust me, it does a fantastic job at closely following the same designs that the Dynamic Island has. It's got the same charging animations, similar music controls, connected devices, and other basic notifications. It even expands when you long press any of them. Plus, it's completely free with no ads. A great alternative, though, is Dynamic Spot. It does require you to pay to unlock certain features, but it's a bit more reliable when handling basic notifications. Moving on, I think we can all agree that the new iOS lock screen is way better than the one that native Android has. It's much more customizable and feature packed. Plus, one of the things that I'm jealous of is that iOS allows you to add widgets to the lock screen. They're not gonna be full size like on the home screen, but hey, it's still more than what Android provides. And it sucks, because Android used to support lock screen widgets back in the KitKat days. Luckily, there is a way to bring it back, kind of. With an app called Lock Screen Widgets, you can add any custom widgets on top of your lock screen. Then you can swipe left or right to switch between them all. They're even interactable, letting you skip a song, scroll through your events, and more. You're probably thinking that it's a gimmick, but it actually works really well. Another alternative is you can just replicate the entire iOS lock screen with an app called iLock. It looks exactly like the new iOS lock screen, and it even lets you save multiple presets so that you can change between them quickly. I just don't like that when you turn off the screen, it tries to do what the iPhone does by not turning it off completely, which does drain your battery. And I couldn't find a way to possibly disable it. So I had to look for an alternative, and what I found was lock screen iOS 16. It works the same way, and it even provides more widget options. It just doesn't use the same iOS fonts but it's completely free, so why not give it a shot? If you're liking this new video style where I just jump straight into the action, let me know by dropping a thumbs up and check out these new Halloween wallpapers I just dropped on my Patreon. Pretty spooky, but clean at the same time. I also dropped these new widgets to spice up your home screen, pretty spectacular, and it really takes your launcher to the next level. Anyways, the iPhone 14s and pretty much every other iPhone running iOS 15 or higher allow you to extract text from a photo or even a video thanks to a new feature called Live Text. It's perfect for when you're trying to quickly grab that number from a sign or copy the same notes from a tutorial. Well, on Android, you can do the same thing with Google Lens. Just open the app and then scroll over to the text section to copy anything that's in front of you. Simple as that. Notifications on Android are also still far ahead of iOS, but there's a unique feature that iOS has that I really want on Android. It's called Notification Summary, and it basically stores every unimportant notification and shows you them later on in batches during the day when you're less busy. That way, you won't get constant dings within your pocket. To replicate this on your Android, Daywise is the best choice. Even though it is a bit pricey, it works perfectly at blocking out those unimportant alerts until you're ready to see them. I'm also really jealous of SharePlay, which lets you enjoy a movie or song with your friends in real time. Native Android has nothing of this sort, but you can download some apps to help you out. When you want to watch movies or videos with friends, you can use an app called Teleparty. You both need the app, but through a simple invite with a link, you can both enjoy a show from Netflix, Disney+, Hulu, or even HBO Max in real time with sync controls. You can even message each other. It doesn't require you to sign up or pay for anything. You just need to sign into your streaming accounts for Netflix, Hulu, etc. Rave is also another great option and it supports a lot more streaming services like YouTube and Google Photos, but it does require you to sign into your Google account, so that's the only downside. It's incredible to see how far technology has come. Smartphones are stacked with features, computers are lightning fast, the iPhones not have an island. Oh yeah, and there are robots that clean after you. My go-to has always been Narwhal, the sponsor of this video, because their robots can vacuum and mop your floors amazingly, saving you a lot of time and hassle. Plus, they just released a newer model known as the Narwhal Frio, which can clean faster, smarter, and more effectively. For starters, it's got a new and improved touchscreen display to let you configure the robot and choose a unique cleaning mode. It even includes some new cleaning modes, like the option to have the robot clean and vacuum at the same time. Pretty spectacular. Plus, it'll now automatically lift the sweepers during vacuuming so that the floor doesn't get wet. The side brushes will adjust the speed, making it more effective at getting those tricky spots. And the robot will automatically twist and swing to get closer to the edge of the wall. Very clean and effective. 
Under the Freedom mode, it's also gotten smarter since it can detect when the mop is too dirty so that it returns to the station to clean itself. Really cool. It can also intelligently adjust the mopping duration and knows when it needs to mop over certain areas twice. It can also detect different types of floors to adjust the pressure. And before you ask, yes, it does work with carpet. Pretty smart. The best part though is the new design of both the robot and the station. It feels a lot more humanized. The robot is a lot more silent. The station is more aesthetically pleasing. Maintenance is more convenient. And even the new app makes it easier to start cleaning when you're not home. So stop mopping your floors and hurting your back. Just let the Narwhal Frio do all the work so that you can spend more time with your family and friends. I'll drop their link at the top of the description if you'd like to pick one up. To further stop distractions on iOS, Apple created a feature called Focus Mode, which basically limits what apps and contacts can send you notifications. And you can create different focuses for different scenarios and even customize what lock screen and home screen pages get shown. Well, on native Android, there's also a focus mode that isn't as powerful or customizable, but it still stops any distracting apps from being used while it's enabled. It can be found within the digital well-being section of the system settings. I'm sure we're all aware that if we give someone our personal email, then there's a possibility that you may end up getting spammed. So Apple tried to combat this with hide my email. It lets you create a fake email address to give to that sketchy newsletter and then any email sent to that phony account will get forwarded to your inbox. Once you're done with the spam, you can burn that fake address and stop them. Saves you the hassle of needing to jump through hoops just to unsubscribe. If you want to obtain the same feature on any Android, you can download Simple Login and it does the same thing. But it does take it a step further by showing you how many emails each handle has received. Pretty awesome. Another excellent iOS feature is that within the battery settings, it'll show you the battery health to let you know if it's time to replace it. An excellent option for those who own an older phone. On Android, you can't find anything like this in the settings, but you can download an app called Electron to obtain the same feature. You'll just need to charge it a few times before it can tell you the wear state. It'll also give you other important battery info like the discharging rate, battery temperature, and more. On the iPhone, you can double tap or even triple tap the back to launch a specific task like the camera, flashlight, shortcut, etc. Some Androids like the Pixels also have this feature, but it's not on every phone. So if you want this feature, download TapTap -tap through the link in the description. It'll let you do plenty of actions whenever you double tap the back, like launching the app drawer no matter what app you're in, turning an app into split screen, taking a screenshot, if you have root, you can even open up the device home controls, which I love doing. Way more powerful than what even the iPhone 14 provides. Lastly, just like Android, iOS lets you know what permissions each app is using and when they're being accessed. But where Apple takes it a step further is by also showing you the trackers that each one carries. Now trackers aren't necessarily a bad thing and practically every app uses one, but some take it way too far and shove in way too many and somehow Android doesn't let you see which trackers each app has. So what I do is I use an app called Warden and it lets me see every tracker found within every app I have installed. Plus, if I have root, I can even disable every tracker with a switch of a button. Very useful. Anyways, those are 10 iPhone 14 features that you can have on your Android right now. If you found this video to be helpful, all I ask is if you can please drop a quick thumbs up. It'll help this video get recommended to others. Also, why not get subscribed with the notification bell turned on? I promise quality videos like this are released every week and you're not going to want to miss out. Either way, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!